Riley's Cook here for the Big Sky Basketball Virtual Tip-Off on ESPN+. Plus. I'm joined by Coulter Nuanez and Krista Redpath, who will be breaking down the men's and women's preseason all-conference teams, respectively. So we're going to just take a look here at the teams. We'll start, Krista, with you. Is there anyone you feel was left off of the preseason all-conference team? I don't think there was anyone left off when I look at it. It's These polls are exciting to get the season started. And I think the players that are on the preseason selection had great seasons last year. They have big roles this year, leadership expectations. I think there's a few players that would they have been on this list? Um, wouldn't have been surprising. I think Char Charita Doherty out of Southern Utah, Summer Menke at Sac State. I think you take a look at Lauren Orndoff and Nina Radford who didn't play last year for Coach Payne for Northern Arizona. I think they could have been in the mix. JJ Nakai, Reagan Skank. Uh, Montana, I feel Abby Anderson could also be in the mix um, with a Carmen G. Feller because they're such a great four or five uh, punch. But for the most part, I think that they got it right. All right. Now, Coulter, what about on the men's side? Anyone that you feel was left off? Well, I know this is a common narrative from the conversation that we had earlier, but it's just a bizarre experience when you look at a preseason list and there's not a guy from Montana on there. I mean, Montana's won the big sky, what, 13, 14 times? I mean, they are the storied program in the league other than Weber State. And so uh, I think more, though, it's not necessarily a testament to any sort of downgrade of Montana's program. I think it's actually a testament to the team that Travis DeCure has put together. They have a bunch of guys that are, are blossoming stars. None have taken a hold of that yet. I don't really know if that will actually even happen because he, Travis DeCure wants to run sort of a no-star system, which I think is actually very conducive to the style he wants to play but there's a lot of guys at Montana, whether it's Josh Vasquez or Robbie Beasley or Kyle Owens or Derek Carter Hollinger that are ready to break out. And so we'll see if any of those guys are there toward the end. But other than that, you know, I was actually a little bit surprised that Tavion Jones was the MVP. I think he's a tremendous player. I think he's one of the best players in the league. I also just think that he's I'm not going to say the second best player. I'm going to say the second most important player on his team. I'm always very preferential to point guards that play with the heart and soul that John Knight does. I mean, John Knight, if you ever watched him, I'm telling you, if you're a big sky conference country and Southern Utah's in town, go watch John Knight. He gives you everything you want. He's like the Russell Westbrook of the big sky conference, but he's actually, he's even more, he's more in control than Russell Westbrook. I think he has better pace. I love watching John Knight, but I thought that either John Knight or uh, Bodie Hume from Northern Colorado could have been the MVP, but I think that's a testament to the league where you think that, there's maybe three, four, even five guys that could get votes for MVP. I mean, that's what happens when the reigning MVP, Tanner Groves, moves on like he did. But also, I think it's a testament to just the depth in the league. Right. Definitely a testament to the depth in the league. Uh, now, Krista, when we look at the preseason MVP on the women's side, we see Beyonce B. What stands out to you about her? There are so many things that stand out about Beyonce B. And Coulter knows this. She's one of my favorite players. I went on and on about her last year. Um, she brings a lot of size to that guard position. You know, she's 6'1". She has a great mid-range jumper. She has a, a very good three-point shot. She also gets in and aggressively goes after rebounds. And she's one of the only players that I know that can dominate both ends. So she can rebound the basketball and lead her team in transition. She averaged over 16 points a game, close to eight rebounds, two assists, and she shot 42% from the floor last year. Overall, Beyonce B is that catalyst on a team where players just play better all around her and she makes her teammates better. I think that definitely makes someone worthy of being the preseason MVP for sure. Now, Coulter, you talked about his teammate, uh, John Knight, but what about Tevian Jones? What about our, our MVP on the men's side? What stands out to you about him? Well, uh, first of all, just to, to accentuate Crystal's point, the thing about I think that's so great about Idaho is that they have always had outstanding freshmen under John Newley, but they also then continue to get better. Oftentimes we see freshmen sort of get stuck, especially in the women's league, and not reach that MVP level until later on in their careers, if at all. And Beyonce B went from an outstanding freshman to now an outstanding player, one of the best in the league. But Tavion Jones – He's a, a player that could have gone to several different big sky schools. And I know several different big sky schools were in the mix for him. So he definitely proved to be a pivotal domino, uh, but there's just not a lot of guys like him that you're going to find at the big sky level pretty much ever. When you talk about the length and the athleticism, I mean, he's a big 10 level athlete. That's why he played at Illinois, but not only is he a phenomenal athlete, 
He's a phenomenal shooter too. And I think that some of the Utah players with a distinct attitude um, compared to everybody else in the league. And I think that that chip on their shoulder, that's why I'm so interested in them being the number one team because the chip that they play with is the number one thing that they have over other opponents. So how do they handle with that target on their backs? But that said, I think that Tavion Jones, he's a key to that because he's, he's, Besides his athletic talent and his shooting ability, he's also just a very, very, um, how do you say this, impassioned and intense competitor. He's very, very competitive. I think that fits right along with John Knight the third and Mason Fawcett and all the, the great players that Southern Utah returns uh, for Todd Simon's squad. Krista, now Idaho State women, they're the only team with two players represented on the preseason all-conference team. What does that say about the balance approach the team takes to success? Well, I'll tell you what, you got Diaba Canante and Dora Golish. Uh, you could have had the entire first team just be Idaho State. When you look at the fact that Estefi Ors was the Big Sky Conference Tournament MVP, Callie Bourne and Montana Ultraki were also on the all-tournament team. Those are three players that were left off. But the one-two punch with Dora and Diaba is just so quick and poised. And they run the ball club correctly, efficiently. They deserve the first team nods. No, Coulter, uh, something interesting about the men's side is that seven players were selected to the team. We've talked about uh, the depth uh, in this league. What do you think that says about it? Well, I think that the, this is a, such an interesting all-league team because you have some proven guys. Um, and then also, I, I, it's not as if these guys are unproven, but the, the fact is that several of the most talented players in the men's league moved on during the off season. And that, that is, it is what it is. You can debate it all you want, but it's the state of college hoops right now on the men's side, but who rises to become sort of that dominant guy. So Utah got the number one seed last year by playing really good team basketball. Who, who amongst those, that trio on the first team here though, rises up. You know, it's also interesting because you see Xavier Bishop and you see Jabril Bello from Montana state. Amin Adamu was the best player at the Big Sky Tournament down the stretch. He got Montana State all the way uh, to the championship game, and they knocked out Southern Utah as the top seed. It was one of the best runs the Bobcats have had in the postseason, and Amin Adamu was a key factor in that. So um, I just think that the fact that there's seven guys, it is a testament to all these players that are sort of jockeying for that position as uh, one of the premier players in the league. And I think you could make a, probably seven more guys on that list as well uh, that are going to be in the mix for it. So I think the league is wide open. I think that uh, the, the race for all conference honors is wide open on the men's side as well. I, I think that just makes the entering into this new season all the more exciting. You know, it's definitely seen some things that we have never seen before in the league. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, thank you so much, Krista and Coulter, for hanging with us for another segment during the Big Sky virtual tip-off on ESPN+. Plus. Now, for our Big Sky fans, Krista, we'll go back to you. How can they stay connected with you and your coverage throughout the season? I have a show with Coulter each week around the Big Sky and women's hoops that is presented by Nuanas Now. That is 1029ESPN.com. It's also live on 1029. It's televised statewide with SWX. And you can also download our podcast. So I'll be bringing you coverage and action with Coulter every week, starting here as we begin the Big Sky race. And I'll also be calling some color commentary for various networks and calling the tournament, of course, in March for the Big Sky Conference. Which you always do such a fabulous job of. Coulter, what about for you? How can our fans stay connected to you and your coverage? We have a daily radio show. Uh, originates in Missoula, but broadcasts around the state on uh, ESPN Radio, as well as SWX Montana Television. You can find that archived or uh, just out of market in any form or fashion on the Nuana is Now podcast, which is uh, available on all your podcast hosting platforms or by going to 1029ESPN.com. We'll also have feature stories and analysis and, and other podcasts throughout the, the fall and winter as well at SkylineSportsMT.com. So we'll have daily coverage there as well. And I'm very much excited for all of it because I think it's going to be a fun and exciting year of Big Sky Conference basketball. That's for sure. Thank you so much, Coulter and Krista, for joining us. This is the Big Sky Virtual Tip-Off here on ESPN+. Plus.